uh, Argo, this is ARG, Argo Investments, uh, which on average trades at a premium of 2.0, but its standard deviation is 5. So it does go into the negatives at times. Uh, so here's the correlation matrix, and this is really what the principal components analysis is actually uh, basing uh, is using to perform the analysis and uh, just as a si just as a little note, the fact that these ones here are on the principal diagonal diagonal that is actually the main differentiator between components analysis and factor analysis components analysis. Uh, is trying to reduce the total variance and the variance of each variable in a standardized format is one uh, because um, when you look at a correlation matrix you're looking at standardized da data with, um, and in a standardized format the, st the standard deviation and the variance is necessarily one and in factor analysis you're trying to reduce common variance and you're going to input something different here. I'm going into too much detail already about the differences between component and factor analysis but uh, I'll go into the correlations. We can see that Carlton Investments and BKI have a positive correlation of 0.57 so they seem to hang together. The, when Carlton is investing is trading at a premium BKI tends to trade at a premium but there are also some negative correlations here which is a bit unusual. You wouldn't really expect that too much, but I know from uh, history and, and knowledge of these investment uh, assets that uh, Carlton's a little bit of a, an outlier in its pattern of trading with respect to premium and, and, um, and discounts. But we can see a lot of positive correlations mostly. There's a lot of there's positive correlations here that are very consistent and some positive correlations over here. So overall there's a lot of positive correlations but there are also some negative correlations. So this is not going to be a real straightforward one component uh, extraction. And in fact, the screen plot was telling us that there was two factors or two components. Uh, KMOs, Bartlett's tests of uh, sphericity. If there is no point in actually uh, or justification in performing a data reduction procedure, Bartlett's, te Bartlett's tests will actually be um, non significant. Will be non significant. But because in this case it's statistically significant, it's basically telling us that there's, it's a pretty silly test in, in really, because it's telling us that there's at least one statistically significant correlation in the correlation matrix. So that's not really huge news. Uh, but the Kaiser Meyer Oakland measure of sampling adequacy is also a more um, effect size measure of, of determining whether you should uh, perform a principal components analysis or not, or factor analysis. And it's a rule of thumb approach. 0.69 is a good value. You know, anything 0 0.70 or higher is great. Uh, I think anything in the 0.4 is starting to get low. These are rule of thumb that people use. Uh, but overall, you look at your correlation matrix, look at your measure of sampling adequacy. Is it over 0.4? Again, that's a rule of thumb. Um, and Bartlett's test of sphericity, is it at least statistically significant? And if it is, then uh, you'll feel confident in, in performing your components analysis. Here are the communalities um, that are outputted in SPSS. And uh, what we have are the extraction. So based on two components being extracted, uh, the communalities represent the percentage of variance that's being accounted for by the uh, components analysis and we can see that uh, AFI has the largest amount of variance that's being explained by the component analysis uh, solution so 87.9 percent of the variance in AFI's premium discount trading variability is being accounted for by this two component model that's huge it's very very big whereas we can see down here AMH uh, does seems to beat at its own drum. It's it's only having 26. That's still not bad. 26.7 percent of its total variability is being accounted for by the two-component factor solution. Uh, but overall, these communalities are quite good. Again, there are rules of thumb about what's good and bad, and uh, maybe something at about 0 0.1, 0 0.2 is starting to get pretty low. Um, and you'll see that in the in the pattern matrix with the factor loadings or component loadings. Here in the total variance explained. Uh, we have here uh, the only real thing that you should interpret is this side of the table because this is the extracted sums of squared loadings that we've extracted from the uh, the uh, the two fa two component factor solution or two com two component solution. 
um, and we have our um, extracted sums of squared loading 